Hi, First Hampshire. This is State Representative Lindsay Sabadosa. I'm here with my monthly update for you, and this month we've decided to talk about a really hot topic, education. We're doing a lot in the State House around education, and of course, locally, it's been a really big issue. So today I've brought in some educators from both Hatfield and Northampton to talk to us about what the issues are in their communities, what they would like to see happen in those communities, and what we can do in the state level to be of assistance to them. So this will be an educational process for you and for me. So I'm going to turn it over right now to some of our educators from Hatfield. Hi. 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 So I'm um, Audrey Weston. I'm co-president of the Hatfield Teachers Association and a fourth grade teacher at Hatfield Elementary School. And I'm Amy Hudzik. I'm the other co-president of the Hatfield Teachers Association and a first grade teacher at the elementary school. Fabulous. Thank you so much for being here. Thank, Thank you for, for having, having us. us. So let's hear a little bit about what's going on in Hatfield. So one of the big concerns in Hatfield right now is insurance. Mm -hmm. um, the teachers love the insurance that we have, but unfortunately in Hatfield they pay the minimum amount towards our insurance, which is 50%. And uh, that becomes very difficult for many teachers and they cannot participate because it is too expensive. For them to support that, oh. so so we're working on um, we're working with the town and trying to bring forth um, uh, something for the warrant for the town uh, meeting coming up in May on the fourteenth. What um, time is that? Um, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Yeah. And where? <clears throat> at usually at Smith Academy, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I, I think, think so. so. Great. Or it's yeah. We'll yeah, okay. We'll know. Wonderful. <laughs> we'll make sure to put it in the video. Yeah. All right. Um, so we put that out there. So we're hoping to get people to show up at the town meeting to help support us going forward and try to increase from 50% to higher for our um, town employees. Okay. This is for all town employees. Yeah. All yes. town employees. And yeah. do you have any idea about how many people are employed in that field? Um, I think it's around 100 that okay. are employed, but I think it's somewhere around in the 60s that actually get the town insurance. Okay, great, great. And then we have some more educators from Hatfield as well. Hi, I'm Jean Hobby. I'm the school nurse for the town of Hatfield. And um, first of all, thank you for inviting us here today uh, to talk about uh, the health insurance question in Hatfield for all the town employees. It's been my privilege to work closely with the school staff who work very hard to get to know the children and the families and to support the children and families. Because of that, they helped me do my job. Um, but it's also been a privilege, uh, unfortunately, to um, meet so many staff who confront health issues related to working a second or even a third job in order to make ends meet, in order to pay for their share of the health insurance. Um, and that's a detriment not only to the health of the employees, but also um, to the children in the long run. Thanks. I'm Jessica Corwin. I'm the general music teacher at Hatfield Elementary School. I love teaching in Hatfield. I get to teach every child from preschool through sixth grade. So I, and I've been doing it now for, this is my sixth year. So I know a vast majority of the children I have worked with them in the school district. Um, I had a situation when I had two children who were both in daycare. Um, because so much of my paycheck went to a full family plan of health insurance mm -hmm. on the Hatfield plan, my paychecks were not as large as my daycare bills. Oh. So I worked, did my job just for the health care, um, and then my husband's income had to subsidize the daycare bills that enabled me to do that work. Wow, that is that's really compelling. Anybody would have to spend that much money on their health insurance. It's a wonderful plan. We do really like our insurance. That's great. Yeah, that is but, great. But and for a family plan right now, I'm paying almost $11,000 a year. So it's substantial. And then we have an educator from Northampton as well to talk a little bit about what's going on here in Northampton. So um, My name is Sadie Cora. I'm a third grade teacher in Northampton, and I'm the president of the Northampton Association of School Employees, which is the wall-to-wall -wall educators union for the Northampton Public Schools and Smith Vocational. Okay, great. And tell us a little bit about what the Northampton educators are looking at and facing. So we're, um, we're in contract negotiations right now, and what we're facing is a situation where um, the example for teachers is that the average increase for teachers has been 1.08% mm -hmm. over the last 10 years. And so um, 
that is uh, less than cost of living. So as all of our other expenses go up, the health insurance goes up every year, uh, we find that we are in, in reality getting paid less and less. So uh, we really feel like Northampton is a really progressive town. Northampton um, makes a lot of statements about valuing educators and about, um, you know, equity. And um, so we really feel like it's time for us to start closing the gap between the pay in Northampton and the pay in surrounding communities. Um, and, uh, and so that's what we're working on. So it sounds like both communities have some really serious issues, quite honestly, but they're they're different. Do you all see any connection, though? Is there any sort of point of solidarity between what teachers and educators in Hatfield and Northampton are, are facing at this moment? Yeah, I definitely see the connection. Yeah. And, and, you know, we love the fact that we can support them and, then, and they can support us mm -hmm. in our kind of our issues that are going on in different towns. Um, we also have the same concerns with our pay, mm -hmm. um, again, with no cost of living increases and, you know, being the 12th lowest paid district in the state right. um, is definitely affecting, you know, all of our teachers and even our staff, um, our other, you know, custodial staff and non-union members. Um, they're not all making, you know, minimum wage. Yeah. And so we're really, you know, I know that they're battling the same thing. and. They want all of their um, support staff and everyone to be paid fairly, and so do we. So, you know, it's part of another issue that we, we see connection with, with Northampton. Yeah, absolutely. I think we have to, you know, we, we, as educators, we are sort of, you know, creating the world that we want to see beyond our classrooms, within yes. our classrooms. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that we that we have to fight for is equity mm -hmm. for, for the kids and within the community <clears throat> and for ourselves also. We have to be able to live. We have to be able to, to pay our bills. And, and we need our colleagues to be able to live and pay their bills um, and, uh, and not live paycheck to paycheck. You know, we talk about like the stability funds that <laughs> cities have, um, and, but but we don't have right. that for ourselves. <laughs> right. um, and and there are people in in um, in Northampton who have talked to me about like taking out a home equity loan just to get by, and then that money like. Right, Those that's way. that's yeah. a really yeah. Um, it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable <laughs> right. at yeah. all. No. Right. And I think, Indeed. like um, Jean said, we do have issues with with employees working multiple jobs. Mm -hmm. I know I've worked a second job for over three years oh. and worked through the summers as a single parent trying to make mm -hmm. it. And then I feel like there are professionals, you know, in the education system that are single parents mm -hmm. and it doesn't financially support them. Um, and that's a problem because yeah. a lot of those educators are women. I mean, yeah. and so yeah. it, it's kind of a big deal yeah. when they're yeah. single parents. And we um, just to talk, like bring in the stop and shop strike. We sure. had employees of the Northampton Public Schools who had their second job at yes. Stop and Shop. Well. And, that was, how, <laughs> too, too. and yeah. that was how they were making ends meet. And so yeah. they went on yeah. strike and we went and we held the line with them because mm -hmm. those were our colleagues who yes. leave work in the schools and go mm -hmm. to, to work at yeah. other jobs in right. the community, including Stop and Shop. So. Absolutely. Yes. I think there's another point too, and I, I'm assuming that everybody around the table would agree, and that is that this is an opportunity for communities to show that they want to be a community, that they believe in the value of a community, and one way to show is to support the employees of that community, um, to show that they value them because we all benefit. You know, in my hometown in East Hampton last year, we posted a lawn sign supporting building a new school in our town. We don't have small children in my, our household, but we did it because we believe in the value of our community. And if we promote the value of our community, we all benefit. Supporting the greater good. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So in terms of support, what can people do to support you? Vote. Vote. <laughs> well, actually, um, it's been great to see parents come to select board meeting mm -hmm. and finance committee meetings in yeah. Hatfield. I think the more, um, like Sadie said, that people educate themselves about what's going on in these towns, uh, the more informed they can be about making decisions. And so, and it just, it helps everyone in the discussion. So that right. would be the first thing. Please yeah. come and attend, come attend town meetings. Meeting. Yeah, so like and then meetings, we have a town meetings. meeting all coming public. up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we found out. Um, 
Yeah, we have a, our town meeting is May 14th, and uh, as I said, the warrant will be, uh, it'll be on, uh, the, the health insurance issue will be on the warrant, so they do need a majority vote to have that pass, and then the select board can make decisions after that. Um, yeah, but showing up yeah. was, is, will be a big deal. And I, there are elections coming up in Hatfield too, so. There are, there's a school committee election and a board of selectmen election, I think too, both this year. Great, coming. and there are ways for people to get involved too, right, in planning boards mm -hmm. and other, other yep. things. So there's a lot of ways to tap into the community, I think that yes. people don't always realize. I think sometimes you think, well, I have to run for office and I don't have the time, which is great. People should definitely run for office. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> helpful for democracy but I think there are a lot of other other ways and sometimes those boards get overlooked and we have a lot of the same people on different things so I'm always excited to see more people step up to the plate there mm -hmm. um, what about in Northampton how can people get involved um, similarly you know coming to the school committee meetings coming to the city council meetings um, and and informing people can inform themselves. I think when we started talking about the pay gap between Northampton and surrounding towns, a lot of people were sort of surprised right. because they always just assumed that that wasn't the case. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think, you know, all of that information is public, and, and um, we try to share as much of it as we can. Um, so people for people to inform themselves, mm -hmm. and then if if people feel like that's a problem, um, to let their elected officials know that that this is a problem that needs to be solved and um, we can show movement towards solving it now and then make a commitment to, to continue to work on it in the future. Um, so do you have social media, anything that you want to share, any way that people should tap into what's going on? Yeah, we have a Facebook page Great. Um, for the Hatfield Teachers Association as public so we can Come like us and follow us. <laughs> follow us. Follow us and get more. I'm sure lots more information. And yeah, we, yeah too. we post information about upcoming meetings that people can attend and things like that. Wonderful. How they can get involved. And mm -hmm. what about our Facebook page is NASE Northampton Association of School Employees, and uh, we share lots of information there. And we try to whenever there's an opportunity for people to to show up to something and show their support, mm -hmm. we try to share that on our page, but we also are sharing lots of information that is publicly available, but that we're sort of pulling together so that people can um, know where to find more also. Great, great. So one of the things that I believe is important in my job is to to hear from constituents, and even if you don't live in my district, you teach in it, um, or you're a school nurse in my district, and so I would love to hear from you what you need from me. What can we do for you on the state level? Well, I think clearly education is underfunded. That's mm -hmm. a huge problem. And um, and especially, I think, special education is mm -hmm. really a sore point for a lot of districts. Yeah. And and, uh, and in the more rural districts, even um, traveling transportation costs mm -hmm. are huge. Yeah. And yes. these things impact mm -hmm. the budgets. And then there's not funds to spend money in the way that they should be spent. Right. So. Um, allocating more money to support right. education, mm -hmm. and especially in smaller rural areas where they don't have access, they don't have the tax base that larger areas may have. Yeah, I know we're waiting on Chapter 70 money, yes. and um, and we're hoping for good news for the Promise Act. Yes, and the Jewish Act, yeah. 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 Yes. And so the Promise Act has already had its hearing, mm -hmm. so we're still waiting to see what will happen. The Cherish Act, that hearing is coming up on April 30th. So um, the Cherish Act, I, actually, if there's anybody here who wants to speak to it, I'm happy to not be the person. <laughs> 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 um, well, so the, the Cherish Act would deal with higher ed, and right. that would be debt-free higher ed. Right. And and then the Promise Act is fully funding, fulfilling the Commonwealth's promise to our public schools by fully funding them as uh, according to um, the recommendations, the foundation budget recommendations. So we'll, we'll see what comes out with the Promise Act. I'm very supportive of the original Promise Act, the way it was written, filed by Sonia Cheng Diaz, Senator Sonia Cheng Diaz, and Representative Aaron Vega and Mary Keefe. Um, and then with the Cherish Act, we'll have that hearing on April 30th. So that's a public hearing and people can submit testimony, which is really just anything in a written form, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't have to be fancy, but you can send it in and voice your support, and I'm happy to bring that to the hearing, and I think it'll be a, a very, very big hearing, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of red there. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
That is Funding Friday today. That's why we're all wearing our red for red. Excellent. Well, is there anything else anybody wants to add? Yeah, just thanks for thank thanks you for, for having, having us. Thank, thank you for, you for listening. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think in Hatfield, we love working there. Yes. And clearly it's a beautiful town. Yes. And uh, people of Hatfield have a lot to be proud of. Yeah. Um, and the people who work there work hard. They work hard to clear the streets. They work hard, you know, to keep everybody safe. There are wonderful people who work in town. And um, hopefully if people come out and support on May 14th, they'll see that um, they can keep their town the beautiful place that it is. Well, thank you, thank you. Well, thank you everybody for watching. I'm really happy to have had these wonderful educators here today so that we could learn more about the issues facing Northampton, the Hatfield, and all of the First Hampshire District. I will be doing my part from the State House to support the Promise Act and the Cherish Act and to make sure that we get the Chapter 70 funding that our district deserves. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next month.